let's go. I've always loved the sea. I've always loved being outside and having adventures, challenging myself, learning new things, and seeing beautiful places. In 2009, I rode across the Indian Ocean and loved it so much, exploded my mind, that I decided I wanted more. More oceans, and I wanted some people as well. So I decided that I would make my journey from London to London via the world, rowing across the big blue bits, kayaking across the slightly shorter blue bits, and cycling wherever there was no water to do so. I wanted to raise money for charities, four charities, Copperfield, which is a breast cancer awareness charity, Jubilee Sailing Trust, MND Association, and Water Aid. And I wanted to inspire lots of kids as well. It felt like I went from a lot of people at the start under Tower Bridge on April Fool's Day 2011 to slightly fewer as I crossed the, went down the Thames and crossed the English Channel with Justine, my kayaking buddy, and then I was all alone, just me and Hercules on my bike, pushing east through Europe and Asia and meeting the most amazing, wonderful, extraordinarily, ordinarily people along the way. I loved it. I loved the stories, that kind of reciprocity of curiosity and a moment of shared whatever it was. Those people became a part, as my, a part of my team as much as anybody else did on the way. But it's Gao that is the most memorable of all. I met him at a petrol station in China. He said he wanted to ride a bike somewhere but didn't know how. It looked difficult. Half an hour down the road, here he is asking if he can come with me. He wanted to cycle to Beijing, about 4,000 kilometers away. I was thinking, what if you die in the Gobi Desert? He was telling me it would be great. <laughs> he said he'd go and buy a bike, so I said, meet me in two days' time, and off we went into the really super hot, crazy Gobi Desert, having an utterly miserable time and an utterly wonderful time as well. It was crazy tough, but it was brilliant because we did it together. And it was amazing watching Gao grow from being insecure, keen to impress me by pulling up his biceps and doing jumping jacks and lunges. <laughs> Growing into this confident rider who was helping other people fix their bikes. Given that he didn't know how to fix a puncture on the first day, that was pretty cool. From Gao, I cycled on up through China to the edge of Russia where I met some of my team who'd come out to help me get down to Japan. It was like a six-week hell of a triathlon, but it was beautiful too, cycling down some ridiculous roads and kayaking through some beautiful places. I reached Japan where I had a small rest, and then I prepared to row across the Pacific Ocean. This is my boat, Gulliver, about to head out with all the things that I'd be taking for about five or six months at sea. I set off in May 2012, and it was brilliant until I got the forecast for this bad boy. <laughs> Tropical storm Mauer. Not quite a typhoon, a little bit less, therefore a little bit kinder. I battened down the hatches, wrote smile on one hand, breathe on the other, and was rescued three days later because my boat was so <laughs> badly damaged. Didn't go to plan. I got back out to the ocean the following year, nine months after being picked up, having been through the biggest mental storm of my life, possibly the most dangerous storm ever, back to the Pacific with my boat, Happy Socks. And you can see I'm delighted to be there. I love the way the ocean is that happy mix of adventure, scary stuff, and a whole lot of cool things in between. I go out there for those moments, the wildlife moments where you're looking into their world and they're looking into yours. And when you're brave enough to jump in and get naked for a swim and you jump back out again moments later because it's terrifying. <laughs> I'm the biggest wimp and afraid of deep water. So, uh, <laughs> I'm a bit like Henrik in that my boat doesn't have much steerage either. This bit here shows you a five-week period from the middle of the journey. <laughs> Clearly, I wasn't going to make it to Canada, so I hung a left and I went to the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. I came home, having landed on this beautiful island set, body tired, boat tired, welcomed by people to a land that looked something like my own. It was green and it was raining. <laughs> the goal was that to continue on the journey, I'd return a few months later, having been home for a quick wash, to Alaska to paddle with my awesome kayaking buddy, Justine. She's like the queen of sea kayaking. Her skills are here, mine are down here, but by the end of three and a half months through some utterly awesome places, meeting some super cool communities and some quite scary 
and often stinky wildlife, we made it to the end. Having had a few wees on the way, people are always interested to know how you wee in a kayak. It's like this, bird's eye view, you hold on to the other person whilst rocking a bit like this, you unzip the zip at the back of your dry suit, and you try and wee and direct it onto their boat, not onto <laughs> yours. Then I started cycling. People told me winter was coming as soon as I left Alaska at the end of August, or the coast of Alaska. My fiance, Lucy, joined me for two of the worst winter months I've ever seen in my life. You can see it's quite romantic. <laughs> kind of a cross between Mrs. Christmas and Darth Vader, because it was so bloody cold. I got to the Atlantic ready for the row of my life, the row to bring me home, the row to end all rows. And it was. The weather was utterly rubbish. The wildlife was amazing. I got a resupply from some French sailors, so I had some flowers in the middle. Unfortunately, after 143 days, I was picked up due to a hurricane forecast. The picture of the boat is lost under that one at the top. My bad. Anyway, <laughs> a thousand miles left to go. I flew home, and I decided that I wanted to wrap up the journey in the way that we'd planned. I was ready to let the dream rest. We'd done really cool things. Amazing people all around the world had helped make it happen, inspired lots of kids. I lost my boat on the Atlantic and was gutted, but I was stoked when I heard that the brilliant RNLI had found her washed up on the southwest coast of Ireland earlier this year. Apparently, she hadn't needed me to make it home. 